fascinating and not a little terrifying. Chris joins us now. Chris, you mentioned in the piece, one-tenth of one pound, about the size of a weight of a glazed, glazed donut. donut. Yeah. In amounts that small, how is this still so dangerous? Well, you, you saw what 50 grams of it, the weight of a, a glazed donut will do. It, it ripped that car door apart and sent debris flying in a, for about 120 feet. Think about if you set that off in an enclosed space like, in, like we saw in the Brussels airport or at Penn Station. You've got a lot of people right around there. If you've got it around shrapnel, you're going to injure a lot of people. And that was a very small amount of TATP. The shoe bomber had five times that in his device that didn't go off. So when you're talking about the 33 pounds that was seized, that's 300 times the amount of TATP that we saw detonate and rip through what was a very heavy car door. Common household items as well. How readily available is this? Well, this is one of the things that really concerns law enforcement. It does take some sophistication to convert the uh, ingredients to the explosive, but you can buy the ingredients legally. You can go to a drugstore or a beauty supply store and you can pick these things up, which makes it very hard to trace. You know, if somebody steals C4 or C4 plastic explosive goes missing, that alerts law enforcement right away. You buy a bunch of dynamite, people know about it. But if you're buying hydrogen peroxide and acetone and the other ingredients, which you can do legally, there's no way to trace that. In this country, of course, I know we, are, we do not allow uh, other products to be purchased so that to prevent the, uh, the making of methamphetamine, but now mm -hmm. this is obviously a whole new ball game. You mentioned you can't be traced, but now perhaps it can be detected, this electronic sniffer. What limitations, though, exist? So the, the dog is considered the gold standard. The problem with dogs, like people, you know, they've got an attention span, they can't work around the clock, they get distracted, they get tired. The idea with this sniffer is to think of it as like a smoke detector. They envision it as something that's just sort of there in the background. Uh, when they get it down, they want to get it down to the size of about a smartphone. So a, an officer could wear it, you could mount it on like a turnstile as people are going into a subway station, and it would basically work like a smoke detector. When it picked up a trace amount, it would alarm. Even a trace amount, even in an enclosed, even in a vial that has a, so, has a top. So if you have handled the TATP, so you put it into this device, you're going to get trace part of trace amounts of it on there. And this, uh, they believe, can successfully detect up to one part per billion in the air. So it doesn't take very much residue. Uh, to set off this machine. When are they hoping to have these in place? It will begin real-world testing later this year in two locations here in the United States. Right now it's about the size of a, a backpack or a small suitcase and they want to get it down to around the size of a smartphone. How confident are they? They seem to think it will work. Mm -hmm. um, obviously the real-world testing will, will give them a real sense as to how robust and, and sort of the range, but they're pretty excited about what they think they can do with this technology. I have to believe it's been accelerated in the wake of recent events. Chris it, Van Cleve, fascinating stuff. We thank you for it. Thank you.